accommodating our schedule this week with it being a little bit different uh, with us being out of school and kind of moving the times around. I uh, hope it didn't interfere with your lunch hour or the uh, famous lunch that we have back there for everybody. I hope it didn't interfere Are you with that. Give us a turkey? What's that? Are you going to give us a turkey? Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. You got to wait. Not until Thursday. Um, you know, looking back, uh, proud of the way this team competed. When you look back at UTEP last week, um, playing on the road, we've talked about it before, it's never easy to play on the road. Uh, it's never easy to play in a conference game. And you look the last couple of weeks all over the country at some of the upsets that have happened and some of the teams that have uh, been the overdog, uh, as my daughter always puts it, some teams that have been the overdogs that have maybe gone down late in the season. And I think when you get, uh, when you get late in the season, a lot of people have, you have a lot of things on film uh, and some teams it's probably a little bit easier to prepare for each other. And I think some teams are really going to play with an extra edge. And I certainly thought that UTEP did that this weekend. Uh, but I was really proud of the way that our players competed, the way they hung in there. We told them they needed to be patient. It was going to be a 60-minute game. Uh, I think that uh, I look at our special teams, and I thought they were solid. Maybe some things we could have done better on a couple kickoff coverages, but I thought the way Shao stepped up in the fourth quarter and the two punts that he had that flipped the field were huge field position changes uh, in the fourth quarter, which is why in a 10-10 ball game we made the decision to go into the wind in the third so we would have it in the fourth. The wind was definitely a factor in this game. It was a 30-mile-an-hour wind, and it made a huge difference uh, in the field position in the kicking game and even really affected throwing the ball a little bit, especially on some of the deep balls. Uh, I thought our defense played an excellent football game. They gave up zero big play touchdowns and made them kick field goals three out of four times down in the red zone. And ultimately, those two st statistics were uh, keeping them off the scoreboard, which gave us an opportunity to only give up 13 points as a defense. I thought they did. Uh, I thought they did a really nice. Thought they did a really nice job down there. And offensively, I thought there were definitely some bright spots. We had. Uh, we had drives at 82, 80, and 73 yards. We started the game with a long drive for six po or three points, a uh, long drive, a two-minute drive right before the end of the half to make it 10-10, and then open the third quarter with a long drive. I think we definitely could have played better. It was not our best game on either side of the ball. Uh, I definitely think that we can play better, uh, and I think that falls on everybody. We've got to do a better job as coaches. Uh, I feel like there's some things that we definitely could have done to help our players or put them in a better opportunity and give them a better chance uh, to play. But I think ultimately, um, you know, the missed field goal was huge. Uh, finally, uh, our opponents were 13 to 13 against us on the year. Nobody had missed a field goal. So uh, I'm glad finally the law of averages plays in our favor. I mean, at one point you go, really? I mean, can somebody miss a field goal against us? I don't know how many teams in the country have gone the entire season with uh, without a field goal being missed against them, uh, but we were on our way. Uh, so I was certainly glad to see him push it. It was very difficult conditions, uh, but I'll also say this. Uh, I felt like offensively, those guys on the sideline were fully prepared to go down and score again if that's what they needed to do uh, in a two-minute drive, like they felt like they needed to right before the half. I certainly felt like they had that mindset. But winning on the road, never take winning for granted. Some things we could have done better, but uh, I certainly think that it creates some challenges for us this week uh, to get into this game, game number 12, uh, having the opportunity to play at home against a very good Southern Miss team. Now, I think Coach Munkin has done a great job with that program. When you look over the last three years where he's been and his blueprint and his <laughs> fingerprints are getting to be all over that program right now. I, I look at he's at a young quarterback that's been in the system now for three years, playing really well. Uh, they're doing some really good things as an offense right now. When you look at them statistically, they're number one in our conference in pass yards, rush yards, total yards. Uh, with what they're doing. They're number eight in the country right now, and I believe they're number one in the country right now in explosive plays, plays of 20 yards or more. Uh, I, I think they're really doing a good job right now offensively, and they're putting up a lot of points. They're putting up video game type numbers when you look at them and the number of points and yards that they're putting up in a lot of these games here the last couple of weeks. And they're playing, they're getting better as the year's gone on. It's been impressive to watch them grow. Uh, I think their two running backs are playing really well for them. Their quarterback's playing well. Their offensive line has given them time. They're a really solid football team on offense, and they don't have a lot of weaknesses right now. Uh, defensively, 
They have seven starters back from a year ago that played against us. They took two transfers and a junior college player uh, to kind of bolster that, that they added to that group of seven returning starters. And I think it's truly showing. Again, they're number one in defense. They're in the top two or three in pretty much every defensive statistical category. Uh, I believe they're number 28 in the country in total defense right now. And I think right now you look at it statistically, it's far and away the best defense we've played. Uh, the entire season. It's got all the billings to be a great matchup. Uh, I think for Conference USA, I don't know that there could be a better script right now than the two teams tied, you know, or two, the top two teams in the East and the top two teams in the West uh, having the opportunity to play and what we're looking at is a semifinal matchup. You know, because the loser's done and the winner goes, the winner goes on to play again. Uh, so this is kind of like winner stays on uh, with with what we're in right now. We're in a we're in a four team you know single game elimination uh, right now for the conference championship, which is exciting. There were 13 teams in this league that started at the very beginning of the season with these dreams and hopes, and it's down to four. And so there's certainly a lot of excitement and energy and enthusiasm with our players right now. We talked about a lot of the challenges that we had last week with it being the last the last week of academics, all the final exams, papers due, uh, which made that a very dangerous game last week. Uh, but this week it certainly has an opportunity to play a little bit more in your favor where your players have an opportunity to get all that behind them. Uh, and we get a chance to focus really on football. And we need to get some, get some rest this week and get our feet up underneath us a little bit. So excited about the, the opportunity we have. Excited to have the opportunity to play it at home. I know it's very difficult on a Thanksgiving weekend to play at 11 o'clock. Uh, but I certainly would love to see everybody come out for senior day, for the guys that have been here that have put in uh, the hard work and everything for the last couple of years and being able to take this team to a bowl game, only this, uh, two bowl games in a row, only the second time in school history. Uh, I'd certainly love to see people come out and support this team as we compete for a conference championship against a very good opponent, but also to say goodbye to a really good group of seniors that have meant an awful lot to Louisiana Tech and what they've helped us build here uh, in this program. So excited about the weekend. Jeff said that you know, a good week of practice uh, mentally, from your perspective, mm -hmm. do you think the team was, was ready for the UTEP game? I did. I felt, I felt like we were ready. I thought we played on edge. I really thought, I mean, and, <coughs> you know, I look at it offensively. I look at it defensively. I thought we played physical. I thought we played hard. We had a couple missed tackles early. And as we talked about their scheme with the way they run the ball, playing seven offensive linemen, uh, it's not just about your front seven. They're going to make your corners make tackles, your safeties make tackles. They're going to make everybody be the edge of the defense at some point. Uh, and we missed some tackles early, but I thought we responded to that really well in the second half. Offensively, I, I felt like, you know, hard to say you weren't ready to play when you take the opening drive and go the length of the field and put it in the end zone. Uh, I thought it was probably one of our most impressive drives of the day. Um, but I thought after that, I don't think we played with the same intensity uh, that we needed to up front. Uh, I talked about after the game that I, I certainly felt like UTEP controlled the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the ball. Their defensive line controlled the line of scrimmage. Uh, and going back and watching our film, a little bit of confusion with some things up front and making some identification calls and turning some guys free that um, we've got to get cleaned up that we talked about in here that makes everybody look bad. because. We've talked about that in here even. If you know you can have ten guys pick their guy up and take him down the field and put him on his back, but if one guy you don't block the nose guard and you run an inside zone play, uh, you're in for a lost yardage play. And those are the type of things that we've got to do a better job and clean up. We can't have those type of mistakes this week. Last week I said you rarely play a close game and lo and behold you go and play a two point game. Yep. You got the victory though. What does that say about the program able to not play your best and still get a win? Yeah, and you know we had the same thing with uh, with uh, UTSA on the road. You know we had the same thing. Last second field goal we had to make in order to win that one, and then come back and play um, this game on the road. I, I said this at the beginning of the week. I felt like UTEP is a really good football team. Uh, they're dealing with a lot of injuries right now, but they're a very proud program. They they take on the personality of their coach and Coach Kugler, and you know they're going to compete and be 
tough, hard-nosed, and, and with what they do schematically, they give you a lot of problems, and they were going to load the, block, the box. Uh, I talked to the team about being patient. I probably was a little too conservative at times in that game. And that's why I say I certainly don't just point a finger at them. We all got to look at what we could have done better. And I probably got a little too conservative in that game at times. But um, I look at it and I said, you know, we got to be patient. We got to be prepared to go all the way to the end and, and win a close football game. You know, last year we didn't do that. Last year we lost three games by three points, you know, where we got in a close football game. But when you look at the games we won, all of them were like 10 point or more victories. And so uh, I think this year to win two games at the end, I think speaks volumes about the leadership, the character of this football team, the desire of this football team that they're not going to go away easy. And I think that's what you're going to see this weekend is two teams uh, on both sides of the East and the West division. You're going to see two really good football games with two teams that are really going to be competing. But this is what it's all about. This is what you want. Everybody's good at this point. Where, where specifically do you think you got too conservative? Just overall in play calling. What about in the second half, uh, especially in the fourth quarter on some of those? No, I wouldn't change what I did in the fourth quarter late in the game when you got to run the ball to run the clock. And if I would have stopped the clock or thrown an incomplete pass, then instead of them throwing a Hail Mary from the 45, they got another 40 seconds to move the ball down. I don't question the way we manage the game clock. They put everybody up there. You're going to run it. I'm comfortable saying if we can't run it, we're going to take two and a half minutes off the clock and punt it away, and you don't have any timeouts left, and you're going to have to drive the field to beat us with no timeouts. I would not trade the last couple drives of the game, but there are some things that I felt like I probably could have done to help our offensive line a little bit more. Uh, that's why I said I think we all got to look at what we could have done better. And like I said I don't sit here and just point a finger. I look at myself first and the things that we could have done as a head coach and as a play caller that could have put them in a better in a better chance. But I think at the end of the game, you're trying to make a first down, but more than make a first down, you're trying to you're trying to eat the clock. And the worst thing you could do is throw two incomplete passes and let them save their timeouts and have the ball with with time remaining on the clock. When you when you look. When you look back at last week's game, you lose Jalen Ferguson, possibly your best pass rusher for the half. Mm -hmm. What did you see on tape from that play? I mean, he obviously rushed the pass, roughed the passer, but did you think it was a targeting? Um, you know, honestly, I, if he doesn't hit him in the head, I don't think it's even roughing. I mean, he's <laughs> right there. I mean, he takes one step and hits the quarterback, so I don't think it was a late hit. You know what I mean? I didn't think it was a late hit. I think if – uh, had he been a little bit lower, uh, you know what I mean, and hit him a little bit more in the sternum. But if any part you make contact with that head, you're going you're to get a penalty. I mean, this has been an emphasis the last couple of years to protect uh, the defenseless player, whether that's a receiver over the ball, whether that's a safety on a crackback block, whether that's a quarterback with his eyes downfield and he doesn't see a defense alignment. I mean, you, we've got to protect those guys. And with what we know about concussions, I certainly understand the rules and regulations, and that's why you got to stay away from it. So uh, do I think it was a vicious, you know what I mean, attack? No. Do I, I don't think he speared. I don't think he led with the crown of his helmet. I don't think he did any of that, uh, but he did hit a defenseless player, and he did his face mask did make contact with his face mask. And under the rules, that's a that's a penalty. Hey, Skip, you already kind of talked about their huge numbers offensively, mm -hmm. uh, but I think in their eight wins, they're averaging like 55 points a ball game, and you guys and yours are about 40. I can't imagine the last thing you want is to get into an offensive showcase out there on Saturday morning. So, what do you do to prevent? that from getting to be a 55, 52 ball game. Well, and you know, you look at a lot of it too. Um, I don't know, you go back and look at what we've done at halftime. I mean, we have, uh, this has not been a year where we have tried to, you know, stockpile stats. And, you know, we played our starters early in the year in the opening game for a quarter you know, and then took him out of the game. And then in the second half, I have put handcuffs on this offense quite a bit. You know, when you go in at halftime and you got a 24 point lead, it's like run the ball and run the clock and let's get out of here. It's not about how high up can we move in the statistical game. Uh, I haven't played that. I haven't played that game with this team. We. We took a knee against FIU out here on the four yard line to end the game. You know, I mean, because it wasn't about just trying to score points. And so I think sometimes statistics can be a little bit misleading, but we always talk about as a football team, we, we've got to be prepared going into a game that we may have to win 42 41, and we may have to win 17 15. 
And we got to be prepared to do both, whether that's as an offense or as a defense, because at the end of the day, it's not about scoring 40 points and it's not about holding them to 10. It's about finding a way to manage the game and win the football game. And I think that's one of the things that this team has done a really good job of. I think you're see, going to see uh, two offense that has, offenses that have put up a lot of points that are going to go against one of the best defenses they've played all year on both sides of the ball. And I think it's going to be a great matchup, and that's what's going to make it such a great game. You talk about the fall, the, uh, the the changes at halftime. Saturday was another game where y'all made some adjustments at halftime for defensively. What, what was the biggest changes y'all made like, for UTEP? Um, you know, one of them was just to challenge them to tackle and, and play base football. I mean, we we got out of our gap in a couple blitzes. We got out we got out of our gaps with all of a sudden instead of having you know the six gaps with five offensive linemen. I mean, all of a sudden you're looking at seven offensive linemen and you're looking at eight gaps. And so when you're blitzing, you got to fit them up completely different. And then they're running a stretch. We got out of a gap one, you know once or twice here or there, uh, and it cost us. Then we gave up big plays and we came out. In the second half, when we just said, you know what, we're just going to play a little bit more base defense, and let's let's make sure we put our players in a chance to give them a chance to win. Let's let them win it in the game. Uh, let's play conservative on offense, conservative on defense, and give our players the opportunity uh, to go out there and make some plays. And they they did what they had to do in order in order to win. But really, we simplified it at halftime defensively more than anything. Coach, do you like having that extra day to day to maybe practice um, and not having school to be? What? A distraction, so to speak. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's like I said. The that was one of the challenges last week. Is we had, you know, we're we're at practice, and we've got I don't know, maybe five to eight guys a day that are missing practice because they're trying to get ready for a final exam, turn in a final paper. I mean, the guys were they were in, they were out. I mean, it's like let's go to our Nick. Well, we can't. He's in class. All right, uh, we'll work that tomorrow. Let's. Go. I mean, there were a lot of distractions last week, and we talked about some of the challenges we had in the with this football team with the distractions we had last week and trying to get the quarter finished up. But those distractions last week give you the opportunity to take your breath a little bit this week. I mean, where uh, we don't have a lot of things off the field right now. We don't have we don't have class this week. And from a player standpoint, hopefully we can get a little bit more rest. Uh, we can get a little bit away from it a little bit more, and we can spend a little bit more time in getting ready uh, to play a football game. And so uh, right now I think the way the schedule worked out, as hard as it was last week, I think it has a chance to play to our benefit this week. You have a relationship with um, why do you think Southern Miss this year has turned it around after being, you know, almost one of the worst programs right. uh, last year? Two, three years. Well, I think they bit the bullet with playing a lot of young players uh, the last two years. Those two talked about seven guys returning. Uh, they haven't been playing with a lot of upperclassmen. Uh, I think they've been playing with a lot of young players that have been in their system that are continuing to develop. And I think they're good football coaches and they have a really good scheme. And then what they did, very similar to the way we supplemented the quarterback position with a couple transfers, uh, they supplemented the defensive side with two transfers and a junior college player. Rather than asking four freshmen to step in and play for them, uh, they're asking three upperclassmen to join a group of seven starters and the guys that, the guys that have played a lot of football. I think when I look at uh, their running backs, their quarterbacks, their offensive linemen, we've been looking at the same names for three years now. Uh, so they, you know, when you look at when you look at college football programs around the country, a lot of them you, know, you don't wiggle your nose and build a program. Uh, in some cases it takes time and it may take three or four years and having to play a bunch of young players and get them experience as they come along because we've talked even in here quite a bit, young players make mistakes and mistakes cost you football games sometimes. And I, I said it after our game last year, I think they're one of the more talented teams and when the schedule came out, Kurt Hester and I talked about it in the spring. Uh, that this this season probably will go down to the very last game of the season with us in Southern Miss, and here we are. Uh, it's not a surprise. They've been very talented. I just think they've plugged a couple of those holes and really done a nice job as, as a staff building the program. Speaking of distractions, I mean, this is the time of year where rumors are always floating around about coaches. Is there ever come a point where I mean, outside noise where you have to go and address stuff like this with your team? I, I think – if it ever becomes an issue, I mean, but right now I don't see anything like that being an issue. I mean, it. Uh, I think everybody's kind of got their nose to the grindstone, and I know we're probably in a position where more 
jobs are open during the course of the football season than ever in the history of college football. Uh, it used to be a thing where everybody waited till after the season and then it was a madhouse. I mean, then everybody was scurrying and it seems like those decisions are being made earlier and earlier to give maybe administrators uh, a little bit more time to make sure that they get the right fit for what they're trying to do. But uh, right now, I don't think, I mean, you hear rumors flying around about names, but at this point, nobody's talking with anybody at this point. Everybody's coaching their football team, but I think it's going to be one of those things. Even though the decision is made earlier, the jobs are not being filled earlier. I mean, people aren't, people aren't talking to each other right now. People are coaching their football teams. In your first year, you went four and eight. Did you ever talk with Todd at, at any point about like staying the course? Because you obviously had a turnaround yep. last year from four and eight. <coughs> It took him his third year, I believe, this right. Mm -hmm. um, what type of conversations did you have, if any, with him about? We've him we've before? we've talked just. I mean, with when uh, we've been at the conference meetings and things like that. Obviously, I've known Todd for a long time, and great respect for him, and followed his career and the way that he's grown and developed in the places he's been. And we've talked a number of times just about you know just be patient, stay the course. That's all you can do. I mean, be patient, stay the course, believe in what you're doing. Uh, demand players are trying to do the things that you want to have done and then stay the course and just keep at it. That's all you can do. You know, there's not a, there's not wiffle dust or a magic wand or some spell you can put on everybody to make it happen like that. Uh, you build a program through a lot of hard work and diligent, but I, diligence, but I think consistency and stability is one of the keys to success. And that's certainly one of the things that I think Todd has done a really nice job of over there. Uh, yeah, well, it's not only the, you know, going to be a special weekend because of the number of seniors that are going to go through senior day, but on Friday, we're going to have a graduation ceremony for eight players that are graduating, that just graduated this fall. Uh, to have eight players just finish up their degree, uh, I think is awesome. And we were at UTEP last Saturday when uh, the graduation ceremony was. And so uh, Dr. Geist, Dr. McConathy, and a lot of the administrators uh, were very adamant that they want to make sure that they hand these players their degree. And so I can't be more grateful or more thankful or say thank you more uh, to the people involved to make such a big deal out of graduation because what this means to these players, to these players' families, there's a couple players that are in this group that are the first person in their family to graduate from college. Uh, and I think it's going to be a really special ceremony where, you know, you talk to your players and uh, you say, okay, how many people do you have coming? It's like, oh, coach, I got a bus. You know, I, I got a bus coming in. I've got 12. I got 15. I've got, uh, it's going to be, a, it's a special day. And I'm just very grateful to the leadership here for noticing that and that these young men missed out on that special day on Saturday because they were representing this program and to want to do something special for them when all their parents are in here, even though it's Friday or Thanksgiving and they're giving up their time uh, because that's when all the parents are going to be here for senior day. And so I think it's really doesn't happen like this everywhere. And I just really applaud Dr. Geis and Dr. McConaughey and the leadership here uh, for what they're doing for these players. It's going to be a pretty special day. I'm looking forward to being there. On the flip side, we talked about academics last week. Any concern that you'll be without any players for December, <coughs> December rolls around? Grades are due in tomorrow. Uh, I believe tomorrow. Tomorrow, I believe, is when all the grades are due in. Uh, at this point, I'm not. No, not right now. I think Thomas Graham has done a great job uh, as he has stepped over into the academic world for us. And just after being a student athlete here and understanding what it takes and uh, just the study hall program, the way that the, um, the study hall and the academic center has been beefed up and with everything that uh, Amber and everybody is doing over there, I, I think it's been great. But right now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned. Uh, right now, where a year ago, where you know this is about the time that we were being told, hey, by the way, uh, you got a number of guys that um, didn't pass six credits. I think we're also getting a little more acclimated. We've gone through a transition here uh, where we were um, because eight credits is full time uh, at, at a quarter school that we're in. Eight credits is full time. Uh, the rule was with the NCA was that we needed to pass four uh, half the full time credits where that rule changed two years ago to where we needed six. 
well, you get eight class, you get eight credits, and you you know you end up uh, failing one class, you're ineligible. And so I think that the university and the uh, the athletic department has really done a nice job of making some adjustments uh, to make sure that those some of those situations don't happen again. Because when you get in 12 credits and you have to pass six, I mean you have to fail three or four classes to be ineligible. Uh, which is, I mean, obviously fair. I mean, I don't think that's too much to ask to be a student athlete, you know what I mean, to pass six of 12. But when you have eight credits and you fail one three credit class, it makes you ineligible. That's difficult and it puts a premium on these athletes, these student athletes, making sure that they're getting everything done and they've really done a nice job. Considering the magnitude of, of Saturday's game, what type of crowd do you think these seniors and the team overall deserves in that stadium? For what they've done here, I think it deserves to be sold out. I mean, uh, is what I think it deserves to be. I mean, with the hard work that they put in, and you look at uh, a year ago, these seniors were a part of that win a year ago uh, in the in the bowl game, which was only our third bowl win in school history. And to see the things that they've done and competing for a <coughs> division championship in the conference, this is what you play for. Uh, and I think for these guys to go to only the second bowl, uh, to go to a bowl two years in a row for only the second time in school history uh, speaks volumes. I think we have a great crowd base. I know it's going to be hard for everybody during the holiday. A lot of people aren't going to be here. They're going home, making plans. The students aren't going to be in town. I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to play against these players really, I mean, getting the credit that they deserve for what they've done on the field, and the way they've represented this program uh, off the field, in the classroom, and on the field. And so, yeah, I would love for it to be full to tell these young men thank you for the, what you've done while you've been here and the way you came, the way the, you represented yourself and uh, got your degree and graduated and, and did the things that you were supposed to do and represent in this program in a class manner, which is what it deserves. And so, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen because I do know it's going to be hard uh, with it being a holiday and no school in session. But uh, that doesn't take away from what these players deserve uh, with the hard work and energy that they've put into and the way that they've come together and given up their individuality. I mean, for Kenneth Dixon will be playing his possibly his last game in that stadium. Uh, and it's hard to say that he hasn't been pretty special to the history books uh, at this school. And so I would like for all of them. Uh, to get a huge thank you. And I know the people that will be here, we've got a loyal fan base, and I know the people who will be here will be incredibly supportive, uh, and those with the, that can will, but I know it's going to be hard. I asked Jeff this, but how much stock, if any, do you put in the common opponents at this point in, in week 12? No, I don't. Uh, really, I don't look at it. I think there's a couple things that get involved with that. I mean, you could look at conditions. You could look at time of year they played them. You could look at injuries. Uh, you know, all of a sudden you've got Kenneth missed two games, I mean, in the middle of the season, and you can't take that and go, well, that's the same team. I think really uh, the best way to evaluate them is to go through their last four games. And then you, that's because that's the most recent team that they've evolved into, just like it's the most recent team that we've evolved into with some of the injuries that we've had uh, and some of the guys that have had to step up. So I'm not big into common opponents, and then there's a lot of things that work into that. Maybe uh, you played a team without a quarterback, and you know they played them with them or whatever. So I, I, I think it's more about trying to look at your matchups as you're walking into this weekend. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all.